Hi, my name is Dana McSwain, and you have probably never heard of me. I'm a writer. I've written nine books. I've taken six of them all the way through the editing process with an actual living, breathing editor that I paid cash money for. I have self-published four books, um, and I recently started my own publishing company, and I have a fifth book that's going to be coming out in October. It sounds impressive, but don't be impressed. I do not have what you would call uh, a fancy education. I have an undergraduate degree from Kent State University, our motto, can't read, can't write, Kent State. Um, I have about a third of a master's degree in library science that I just kind of like wandered off from. I don't really know what happened there, honestly. Um, I live in Cleveland which is probably another reason why you've never heard of me. Um, Cleveland recently proclaimed by our very own mayor to be the butthole of America. Thank you, Mayor Jackson, for articulating what everyone else was thinking. We really appreciate that. If you're looking for a YouTube series on how to make it big as a writer, I would keep scrolling. I'm not that girl. I was once too sick, and by sick, I mean I was having a massive panic attack brought on by imposter syndrome to go to my own book signing. So I had this great idea. Um, I put together a box of books, and I signed them all. And then I found a five by seven framed picture of myself and I sent it along for them to put on a table in the hopes that I would sell books. Yeah, that did not work. Um, a lot of people walked by, nobody bought a single book, but everybody wanted to donate to whatever horrible disease had killed me. Um, and then uh, next thing I knew, people were tagging pictures of my table of sadness um, on social media and it turned into a very small scale Cleveland save Ferris kind of thing. And here's the thing, like, I live on a dead end street and at the other end of the dead end is an actual cliff over Lake Erie. And uh, if you think I didn't go stand there and like have my own Hemingway moment, you have never faced humiliation at your own hands. Experience is a bitch of a teacher, let me tell you. Um, I started this YouTube channel because um, I thought it would be interesting to have um, a very honest portrayal of the writing process and going through the uh, expansive learning process of um, not only becoming a writer but becoming a published author, whether you choose to go the traditional route or whether you choose to publish your own work. Um, it's a bewildering universe that you have to learn how to land, how to navigate um, publishing, querying, editing writing little scripts for YouTube that you have to read off of because you're a very old woman. Um, editing, marketing, lots of crying. I cry a lot. Um, I threaten every other week to go get a job at Target even though I'm really vain and I look like shit in red and I also studiously avoid um, offering to help people or asking how their day is. Um, I think that you might find this place to be um, uh, place where you can find sympathy if not actual answers although I will have actual answers for you about some things um, that I have learned about the hard way because that's the only way that I seem to uh, learn I've been a storyteller in one way or another ever since I was uh, I would say nine years old um, that's my first memory of like epic storytelling I was uh, really close with the librarian in our small town library her name was Mrs. Linden and uh, our library was housed in one of those giant old um, like completely run down mansions that are all over the Midwest um, and the city decided to go ahead and put the library in there excuse me and uh, by the time I was nine I had read my way through everything that was, was even like remotely age appropriate Mrs. Linden got straight up tired of uh, doing interlibrary loans for me, so she finally just kind of like threw up her hands and said I could read whatever I wanted to in the adult section. So I made a beeline straight for Stephen King because I had had my eye on his short stories for some time. Um, so early that summer, I read all of his short stories, including the Bachman books, and um, I read my two favorites were uh, The Mist and The Raft which were wildly inappropriate for a nine-year-old child to be reading, but oh man, did I love them. And uh, so a few weeks later, um, one of my friend's moms was driving a bunch of us girls down to a uh, horse camp. And I decided to do an impromptu recitation from memory of both the mist and the raft. And there's like a lot of sex in both of those, but I was nine and my parents had been going through like an evangelical phase for a while. I didn't even know what sex was. That did not stop me from embellishing a lot. And um, the result of which was I was like never invited back to horse camp. I've been dreaming and writing ever since, but um, despite all of this, I would not call myself a mentor um, unless you're looking for someone to teach you how to run like headlong into a brick wall, in which case I'm your girl. And you can Venmo me at Dana McSwain. And if you do that, I will send you a copy of the three page long, unedited, replete with like grammatical errors, um, query letter that I sent 
to Writer's House in 2015. They say that um, agents always just delete um, really bad query letters, but some of them take the time to reply. You don't want that to happen to you. Experience is a bitch, let me tell you. Um, that's the thing though that they're always telling you though right like if you if you read you know writer's digest or anything like that they're always saying that you have to find a mentor did you find a mentor can you find does anybody know how to find a mentor if you do can you comment below because i don't know how to find a mentor like at all i mean do you do you post something on like craigslist list, missed connections is is that how you do it like do you like post something like you have a literary agent and more than 50 instagram followers I have a secret AO3 identity and I write 18 fan fiction. Tana French, please be my best friend. Seriously, Tana. Um, does that work? I mean, I don't know how it works. Like, how does one find a mentor? I mean, the idea, right, is that like you find this mentor, somebody who's already very successful in your field and you kind of like hide out under their expansive literary wings and, and they kind of like suckle you on their experience and then one magic day they give you this Willy Wonka gold ticket right and um it's supposed to magically transform you from this ugly duckling wannabe writer to like a real writer well guess what that's not a thing if you write you are a real writer and you don't need someone to mentor you into that happening um i had this really weird experience um uh not too long ago um i had through a series of weird events started emailing with this best-selling author and she had actually written one of my all-time favorite books like top three um and i was like oh my god guys it's happening i have a mentor oh my god it's happening it's mentor mentoring is happening it's flowing through my veins and i was so excited and then she followed me on social media and we started having like hilarious interactions and i was just like ascending and it was so great and then i posted a picture of a soft boiled egg and she unfollowed me and hasn't spoken to me since and um the egg haunts me. What happened there? I have no idea. The fact of the matter is, is that authors hustle. Um, they work very, very hard. Um, I'm sure you work very, very hard. And the last thing like a successful author has time to do is to um, babysit. And I think that's what it is. And my experience is that um, authors hide their secrets like dragons. But I would say that the one secret I have sussed out over the years is this that every author that you respect every single author that you are completely in awe of they were all a hot mess at one point just like you are and they might actually still be a bit of a hot mess um they don't know all the secrets and um if i could give you one tip today that tip would be to invest time in yourself to invest in learning how to do all of this mountain of things that you probably today think you cannot do um you, it's so easy to get discouraged. You know, you look at the wall, and I've been there. You look at the wall of things you have to learn how to do. Um, what the fuck is Bowker? Um, do I do I upload my books to Ingram Spark? Do I do it to KDP? Both, neither. Um, do I have to get a literary agent? You don't have to get a literary agent. Um, do um, is this is this a rejection email? Is this a maybe? Is this a bot? Is this a form? I don't understand what I'm getting back in the email from these people. Um, what is Rocket? How do you use Rocket? Um, how many rejection letters is too many? Um, what I would say is just like, don't sweat it. Don't sweat all of those little things. I want you to take your time and more importantly, take the time to learn. Um, it's really, really, really important to educate yourself on your chosen field. And you can use um, tools like YouTube, which is what I use um, to teach myself how to do all of these things. And it is, it is a very worthwhile investment. Um, you've probably heard this over the years that um, writing is like climbing a mountain or something like that. I don't know, maybe it is, but um, what I would say to you is that, in my opinion, writing and publishing is not like climbing a mountain. It's like climbing one mountain and then getting to the top and looking out and seeing all of these other mountain tops and wanting to climb them all and also teaching yourself how to. Um, I think it's super duper important. And here's the thing, if you want to be a writer, um, you won't just climb one mountain, you will climb them all, every single one of them. And it, it will be the most satisfying endeavor ever, although maybe not exactly in the moment. Um, the one thing that I hear at when I do signings um, over and over again is people will come up to me and they'll be very like, I'm kind of right too, I get that. And um, uh, they kind of whisper about it very shamefully and then they'll say something like, 
I want to do what you do, which is exactly what Danny Butterman said to Nicholas Angel in Hot Fuzz. I want to do what you do. And what did Sergeant Angel say back? He said, you do do what I do. You write, you dream, you hope, and you keep going. Speed bump after speed bump, you just keep going. You keep picking yourself up and dusting yourself off, and you just keep writing anyway. And at the end of the day, that's really all that makes a writer and literally not one more thing. Um, the thing I would like you to know also today is that, um, and I think every writer feels this way, it is very much like building a bridge while you're standing on it. You're going to make bad decisions. You're going to make decisions out of desperation. You're going to make decisions out of frustration and you're going to make them out of sheer ignorance. Um, every once in a while you're probably going to quit. I quit all the time. Um, I quit and then I like lay down near, like right next to the sheer drop off of failure and I just hang out there for a while. But see the thing is is like if you're like me you get sick of yourself like that and then you say to yourself well I could keep laying here but I kind of really want to go work on that thing I was working on and I, you know what I'm going to try again. And if you're the sort of person to keep picking yourself up and dusting yourself off then this might be a um, fun place for you to stop by and visit and hear my thoughts on some of the other challenges that we all face as writers. Um, you can subscribe um, to my website at danamixwain.com if you would like to. Um, if you would like to uh, like, comment, and subscribe below, um, I would really appreciate it, and I will see you next time.